season opener of the 2020 Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup has been run and won at the Circuit Park Zandvoort. And leaving the Netherlands and moving quickly on to round two in Barcelona, we are left with more questions than answers as to this season's form guide. After looking incredibly fast in pre-season testing a few weeks ago, Red Bull Racing Esports converted their pace brilliantly with both sprint and feature race wins thanks to Graham Carroll and Sebastian Job respectively. It is very early days in the championship with a long way to go until the Monza title decider, but you can't help but feel a little worried for the rest of the field trying to play catch up if Red Bull can maintain this form over the course of a season. Coanda, as ever, were at the pointy end with reigning champion Joshua Rogers taking the first pole position of the year, six hundredths of a second clear of debutant Jeff Giassi, and almost eight hundredths clear of Sebastian Job. But one of the biggest headlines coming from round one that we will kick off today's recap with is the pace, or lack of, for Team Redline. Coming into this season, many expected, including myself, that Team Redline would be a major player for wins and podiums. When you have such a strong lineup that includes Gianni Vecchio, Max Verstappen, Alex Thieb, and of course Maximilian Beneke, to name just a few, the pressure to perform is always going to be there, and when you don't perform, questions are going to be asked. In the case of Max Beneke in particular, whilst I can't say for certain as I don't have access to his telemetry of course, but on the 30th of April a screenshot was shown with Max where he had said that in the previous two weeks he had only done 12 hours of practice, which works out to be less than an hour a day. I'll let you guys come up with your own opinions as to Max's preparation, but compare this to Brian Lockwood on his series debut who punched out 63 hours in the build up to the first round. In Max's stream, he did allude to the fact that maybe the Redline car setup was not the strongest, which given the high profile drivers within the team that did struggle, that may hold some truth. But overall, it was a disappointment all around with the highest placed Redline car finishing 10th in Alexei Yusiakola. Redline are not a team that get excited by 10th place, but they are an extremely high profile team with a lot of firepower. So whilst this may be a bad start to their 2020 campaign, Riding them off after round one would be nothing short of foolish. Next week, for Redline, their qualifying needs to improve as the team could do much better than just three cars in the top 20. And for the rivalry and intensity of the Porsche Esports Super Cup, we need Team Redline fighting at the front. When there is such a high level event as this series, you are bound to find a flurry of Coanda Simsport cars and this year is no different. And speaking of no different, Josh Rogers proved to be the man to beat in qualifying at Zandvoort with not just one, but two phenomenal laps, both of which were good enough to claim pole position. However, when it came to race time, Rogers did not have it all his own way. With a great initial launch, the Australian got up three positions and after just three corners, was looking fairly strong. However, from there, Josh was unable to make much ground on the top four until Brian Lockwood and Sebastian Job came to blows on lap five, allowing the champion to move past the Brit. In the dying laps of heat number one, Rogers and Job would steal the spotlight in a fantastic scrap that lasted several corners, the two actually touching through the final corner at 170 kilometers an hour. But both kept it on the road to round out the first race with a brilliant showing, Many expecting the eventual championship fight to be fought out between these two, this was a significant first race and first encounter for the season. Job had the pace, but in race number one, Rogers had the place. In the future, however, things would not be so lucky for Rogers, who would lead Job once again, but just as the pair started lap number four, Rogers would make a mistake in the infamous Tarzan corner, slide up the banking and clear a very easy path for Sebastian Job to drive through into third place. From there, Rogers would have no response to the pace set by Sebastian Job and the Red Bull. Rogers would be working exceptionally hard to up his pace in time for Spain, where, in the preseason test, Job was able to extend the gap to Rogers throughout. So, Queen to have more than just a small battle on their hands this year. They need to be prepared for a war. Tommy Ostgard would do a fantastic job at Zandvoort for Kawanda and for half of the feature race almost appeared on course for a race victory until contact with Sebastian Job would send him sliding down the order to fourth 
but for Tommy, it is a great start. And if he can continue punching at this level, he could be set to add another feature race win to his collection after his Spa Triumph last year. A little like Redline, however, Coanda had their struggle stories too, with Ricardo Castroledo, Bobby Zelensky, David Williams, and Martin Kronke all having issues throughout their races. And overall for the team, their qualifying with the exception of Rogers had let them down. With just four tenths separating the top 35 cars, it's not like they need to improve drastically. But in this series, those hundredths of a second do mean prizes. We have already spoken a little about the job done by Red Bull Racing Esports over the course of round one. And they were by far the strong force at Zandvoort with Graham Carroll doing an incredible job from the front of the grid to win the sprint race and being backed up by Sebastian Job hunting down Tommy Ostgaard for the feature win as well. In all, it would be two wins and a 1-2 feature race for the team. However, it could have been so much more, believe it or not, with Patrick Holtzman, the team's third and final driver, having a brake rubber explode seconds before the green flag, whilst on pole position. It was a major shame for Patrick, who would get back out on track, but at the end of it all, would end up upside down at turn 8 on lap 1 of the feature after contact with Tuomas Taltala. However, he can rest easy in the knowledge he had the speed to be extremely competitive, which does bode well for him for the rest of the season. Other teams will have to be wary as the next round of Barcelona was used in the preseason test and which teams showed very strong race pace? Red Bull Racing Esports. Sebastian Job winning the feature race there as well. Being a preseason test, we don't truly know which teams did and did not show their true potential, so there is still a guessing game as to who can run strong this weekend, but the signs look positive for the boys in blue. Each week, I want to be listing one driver who I think was the biggest surprise or standout performance from the race, and there were plenty of honorable mentions, such as Max Verstappen's charge from 40th on the grid to 21st in the sprint race, then again up to 11th in the feature race, which was a brilliant effort, but he did have his incidents with other cars as well, including a big moment in the feature on lap 12 where he made heavy contact with Martin Kronke. Jeff Giassi is another honourable mention for qualifying a remarkable second place on debut in the Porsche Esports Super Cup. However, was unable to make much progress in the sprint race and would sadly get turned around in the feature by fellow debutant Dane Warren and end four laps down. However, there can only be one, and my notable standout for the week goes to Brian Lockwood for Racecraft Engineering. I know some people may say that it should be no surprise that Brian did so well after 63 hours of practice, but the fact is in this series, you need to work hard, and Brian did exactly that, and on top of that, he executed and delivered in qualifying with 5th, which he then converted to a podium on his debut race in the series. The only two people that beat him in that sprint race both won races last season. It's safe to say that if Brian can continue to punch in these kind of efforts, he could quickly become a dark horse in this series. Round 2 will hopefully give us a greater understanding of what this year of Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup has to offer. Many big teams from last year are yet to show their colours in the opening round. Giants like Apex Racing Team, Logitech G, Altus Esports, Team Redline, and Vendevel, just to name a few, all have the capabilities to punch out major results this year. It's just a case of making it happen on track, and they don't have long to wait until their next chance at glory. Round 2 comes up quickly this weekend and will be streamed live on iRacing.com's Twitch, as well as on the iRacing Esports Network. Guys, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the subscribe button and maybe even follow me on Twitch. I stream throughout the week at twitch.tv forward slash BoElbert, and it would be great to see you swing by the stream and tell me your thoughts on PESC this season. I'm BoElbert. Take care, guys.